LSU has been producing a ton of big time wide receiver talent as there's been many guys who have come through Baton Rouge who've gone on to do really well in the league lately. You've had guys such as DJ Chark and especially Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, but there's one player who is supposed to be as good as those three, if not better, and his name was Kayshawn Boutte. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, set an LSU record as a true freshman, was arguably the best receiver of the first half of the 2021 season, and is probably one of the most talented LSU wide receivers ever. Unfortunately, he had a really tough junior season, which saw his stock drop. Still though, he was drafted by the New England Patriots, and honestly, this guy could be the steal of the draft, and he is creating a lot of buzz right now for the Patriots. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to who Kayshawn Boutte is, we're going to go through his insane rise, talk about why he could be a steal, and just overall, go through his story. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about Kayshawn Boutte. Growing up in Louisiana, Boutte was special from a young age. His older cousin said, quote, he was one of those kids that was a Pee Wee League superstar. He could do everything and was electrifying at what he did and was a standout player in junior high school. He was a man amongst boys he was playing against and just dominated on both sides of the ball. Keishama grew up in a nice part of a somewhat rough city known as New Iberia, Louisiana, and his father promised himself he would give his family a father, a mother, a stable family, and a good faith life, something he personally didn't have growing up. Surely this was extremely beneficial for Kayshawn, and the Boutte family knew they had a special talent on their hands when Kayshawn would chase the family dog around the yard as if it was a drill, and he was quick. He became known as an elite runner as a kid, and when he arrived at Westgate High School, he had a ton of hype surrounding his name. For a while, he was just known as a track star, but eventually he would take football more seriously and would start to blow up as a sophomore. At 16 years old, he got offers from schools such as Kansas, Tennessee, and West Virginia, with plenty more to come soon. This was due in large part to them hiring former Tulane wide receiver Devin Boutte, no relation, and because of that, he became a top 50 player, was attending camps all around the country, and was matched up with top recruits such as Derek Stingley Jr. He was going to be attending LSU camps, and the Tiger staff was definitely interested in him, but they were still holding off on an offer, but Boutte was upfront about that being the one. He said, quote, LSU is the main one I want. So, all the other offers are alright, but when LSU comes, that's where I want to be. Obviously, Boutte made it clear where he wanted to go, and at the time, he was a blue chip player, was meeting with Olympian runners, and was more importantly, providing hope for the city of New Iberia. One coach said, quote, This is a tough area. Not too many people make it out, and our kids know that. As coaches, we push that narrative. A lot of our kids maybe come from low income areas, so their talents are going to pay for their school. We try to do our best. So where was he going to end up going? Well, ever since he was in 8th grade, he wanted to be an LSU Tiger, and that is what he ended up doing. He said, quote, I knew LSU was the best place for me towards the beginning. I always knew that's where I wanted to go and where I belonged. It feels good to be a Tiger, knowing I accomplished a great goal. He not only hit that collegiate goal, but he also hit his on-the-field goals. As a senior, he caught 47 passes for 1,005 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was also a running back, and he ran the ball 71 times for 874 yards and 12 scores. Add in the fact that he was also a track star, and this guy was going to be a difference maker in college. For a while, it did look like Boutte was a complete lock to LSU, but towards the end of his recruitment, Alabama began to creep in. He said, quote, I was considering Alabama at one point in time. I know when they first offered me, I said I would never consider them, but it just boiled down to looking at things and it kind of changed my mind a bit on them. Based on what I've read, it seems that Bama really threw the kitchen sink at him, but he did not waver. Eventually, he would reaffirm his commitment to LSU, and this was a huge get for Coach Orgeron. He was the number one recruit in the state of Louisiana, and after he dominated the Under Armour All-American game, he was looking to earn his fifth star. He said, quote, I feel like I should be a five star, but I'll never be satisfied. I'll always grind like I have zero stars. As we've already said, Boutte had insane speed, as he was actually fifth in the country in the 200 meter dash, and in the 100 meter dash, he ran a 10.97. The dude was electric. Combining everything, he would eventually get his fifth star, as according to 24-7 Sports, he was listed as a five-star recruit, the number two receiver, and the 24th best player in the class of 2020. With LSU producing so much wide receiver talent in recent memory, how was Boutte going to do? Going into the 2020 season, LSU was fresh off a national championship with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson. They were huge shoes to fill, as the Tigers would need to find a new quarterback, and more importantly, two more wide receivers to step up. Boutte was going to be looked upon to do that, but not at first. 
LSU ended up starting Miles Brennan at quarterback, and the 2020 season was very interesting. Boutte caught one pass in their upset loss to Mississippi State before he would start to go off in Week 3. This was his breakout game against Missouri, as in a close loss to the Tigers, he caught five passes for 49 yards. He catches first career touchdown in a road loss to Auburn, and then went over the century mark for the first time against Alabama. Against the number one ranked Crimson Tide, he caught eight passes for 111 yards. This was insane, as they now had TJ Finley and Max Johnson throwing him the ball. The following weekend against Florida, he once again put his name out there, as he catched five passes for 108 yards and a touchdown, as they would go and upset number six Florida in the swamp. This was a huge game, but it was nowhere near the best game of his season. The following weekend against Ole Miss, Boutte made history. He caught 14 passes for 308 yards and three touchdowns and a 53-48 victory over Ole Miss. This would really put Boutte into the national spotlight. He made SEC history and was now establishing himself as arguably the best freshman receiver in college football. I mean, who could really argue with that one? He finished his freshman season with 45 catches for 735 yards and five touchdowns. Going into 2021, Boutte had an insane amount of hype and he would live up to it. In week one, LSU would have to go on the road to play against UCLA, and at this time, Max Johnson was the starter. In that first game, he caught a career-high nine passes for 148 yards and three touchdowns, and a loss to the Bruins. While this was an unfortunate loss, Boutte was going to go on a mission. In week two, he catched two touchdowns in a win over McNeese State, and then had another touchdown in a win over Central Michigan in week three. After that, they go on the road to play against Mississippi State, and in what was a close victory, he catched four passes for 85 yards and two touchdowns. The guy was off to a historic pace, and he was definitely going to be the front runner for the Bolitnikoff Award. Things would get even better against Auburn, as in that game, he catched six passes for 127 yards and a touchdown, and then he catched eight passes against Kentucky. Unfortunately, LSU would lose both of those games, and they would also lose Boutte for the remainder of the season. He ended up hurting his ankle against Kentucky, and would end up missing the remainder of the season. This was definitely a tough break, and there were some rumors about him just deciding to sit out, but I'm not really going to speculate, and either way, this was a big blow. LSU had a miracle situation against Texas A&M to get to a bowl game, before they would eventually get boat raced by Kansas State. It didn't really help that LSU was missing a ton of good players, and they had a receiver playing quarterback, but at least they got to a bowl game, I guess. Boutte would finish his sophomore season with 38 catches for 509 yards and 9 touchdowns. This all happened in only 5.5 games, and if he would have continued at that pace, he would have had a historic season for LSU, would have been a first-team All-SEC player, and could have had a chance at winning the Blitnikoff. Unfortunately, that's not what would happen, but draft experts and scouts were ready for this guy to get to the NFL. He was a consensus top receiver. Guys such as Quentin Johnston, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jordan Addison, Josh Towns, and Boutte were routinely ranked as the top five receivers, and with Brian Kelly coming in, many really thought that Boutte was going to have an insane season. Unfortunately, 2022 did not go as planned. In their first game against Florida State, he only caught two passes for 20 yards, and they lost by way of getting their extra point block. At the time, there was a lot of speculation about Boutte, as he apparently wiped LSU clean from his social media, but he did return. He caught five passes the following week against Southern, and then went MIA against both Mississippi State and Auburn. Luckily, LSU had other guys step up, but he would finally catch his first touchdown of the season in a loss to number eight, Tennessee. After that, he'd go for over 100 yards in a win over Florida, and then would struggle in three of his next four games. He did catch seven passes in an overtime victory over Alabama, but he really became more of a role player and was not producing the same way he used to. LSU went on that run and ended up going to the SEC Championship game, where Boutte had the best game of his season. Against number one Georgia, he caught six passes for 107 yards and a touchdown, as LSU lost by 20. The Tigers have a bowl game, and it looks like Boutte is going to be playing in it. He is so far in the season, so far in the year, he has 48 catches for 538 yards and two touchdowns, which was extremely disappointing compared to the hype. You can blame that on a lot of factors, but either way, Boutte just wasn't getting the same amount of targets, wasn't getting open, and just was no longer that main guy. After the season was over, he decided to declare for the 2023 NFL Draft, and eventually, he was selected with the 187th overall pick in the sixth round. This was an absolute steal for the New England Patriots, as they got a guy with supreme talent, supreme measurables, and for a low cost in the sixth round. While some were skeptical of the pick, many were saying it was an absolute steal. As of just two days ago, Bill O'Brien has been raving about how good Boutte has been, and some are saying he could make a huge impact as a Patriot in year one. O'Brien has been raving about how he's gotten better and better throughout camp, has gotten more mature, has been making big time plays, and how impressed he is with him. 
A lot of it is coach talk, but all in all, I'm really excited for what Boutte could do this year. Bill Belichick always seems to get draft steals, and it looks like Boutte is the next one in line. It's crazy how he went from a five-star recruit and someone who was on top of the college ball world, falling off almost completely, and now getting another chance. But what do you guys think? If you're an LSU or a Patriots fan, what do you think of Kayshawn Boutte? And what rookie should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.